Good morning. January 15th. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Genesis 4, 9. Self-deception is the greatest of all lies. Cain lied to the Lord, to his family, and to himself. He thought he could literally get away with murder. But the Lord, who knows all things and all hearts, knew the truth. Liars may fool some of the people, even many people, for a season. Eventually, however, lies escalate, truth is exposed, and liars are caught in a fraudulent web of their own making. Pride often manifests as greed and jealousy is at the root of all lies. Like Cain, liars want to have more than their brother and better than their neighbor. They want to appear true when they are false, strong when they are weak, valiant when they are cowardly. They close their hearts to the whisperings of the Lord and the influence of righteous people as they listen to the father of lies. The saints of God are to be people of honesty and integrity, people who live truthfully. Okay, today is Moses chapter 5 verses 1 through 29. We're getting into the story of Cain and Abel again. And when I read Genesis, I said that it felt fast. Like there was a lot missing. Well, this account fills in quite a bit. And one of the things that I found interesting was uh, verse 18. Uh, and it says, And Cain loved Satan more than God, and Satan commanded him, saying, Make an offering unto the Lord. So Satan right here knows what he's doing. Uh, earlier, um, Eve is trying to teach Cain about the Lord, and Cain says, Who is the Lord that I should know him? Um, so, straight off the bat, Satan already knows that he doesn't believe in God, that he's like, What, who? I don't know. Um, but he commands him to make an offering unto the Lord. The whole situation seems bizarre and strange to me. Okay, so, um, uh, it says that Adam and Eve had sons and daughters before Cain and Abel. So Cain and Abel were not the first. That's a clarification that happens. Um, then it talks a little bit more about, um, their demeanor. Abel loved God, Cain loved Satan, and, uh, then it sets up this story. You know, it's not like in Genesis where it's like, oh, they're told to give offerings, so Cain just gave what he was able to give. Um, and it was not accepted because the Lord, blah, blah, blah. No, it clarifies here saying that Satan commanded Cain to make an offering of his fruits, knowing full well that it would be rejected, knowing full well that Cain's pride would be bruised, and then uh, later on here in 29, Satan has Cain swear an oath of death, uh, secret combinations here. He's saying, I'm going to deliver your brother into your hands. He's setting up this whole thing. He is the, the puppet master of this whole situation. It's not just this kind of like, oh, Cain did this thing on his own and he was just kind of innocent and he didn't understand and it's no 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 it was orchestrated from the beginning this whole scene um so that's what's happening in the first 29 verses um so in my side by side um, it talks a lot about mortality and the joy of life and family and children uh, but we're not going to talk about that we're going to talk about uh, love of God or love of Satan and the world. We can choose whom and how much we love and receive the blessings or consequences of our actions. 
When Satan tempted the children of Adam and Eve, some of them chose to believe Satan instead of their parents concerning the plan of redemption. They loved Satan more than God. The results were devastating. They became carnal, sensual, and devilish. Cain and his wife were some of those who loved Satan more than God. When one is carnal, sensual, sensual and devilish, one is subject to the lusts and passions of the flesh. Such become worldly. The world and the things of the world become their God. They are in a state of enmity with God. The moment one chooses the world, uh, thus choosing Satan over God, he separates himself from God. We can choose the world or Satan over God. Things, positions, titles, stations, possessions, honors of men, fame, money, and fortunes, and even our occupation, hobbies, TV, and our daily work. Um, this is just kind of putting into perspective the kind of things that we tend to place in a higher station above God. Um, you know, our hobbies, our jobs, uh, how, how are we choosing a Satan in the in this situation how are we choosing the world in this situation that kind of thing and then in verse 25 it talks about rejecting the Lord's counsel um, so God is saying to Cain he's like listen why are okay so Cain got mad that his offering wasn't accepted and, he's, and God says why are you mad if you do well you'll be accepted but if you don't then sin is at the door, and Satan desireth to have ye, ye. And except thou shalt hearken unto my commandments, I will deliver thee up, and it shall be unto thee according to his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Uh, for from this time forth thou shalt be the father of his lies, thou shalt be called perdition, for thou wast also before the world. And it shall be said in time to come that these abominations were had from Cain, for he rejected the greater counsel which was had from God. And this is a cursing which I will put upon thee, except thou repent. And Cain was wroth, and listened not any more to the voice of the Lord. The manner and type of proper sacrifice had been taught Adam and his children. Cain loved Satan more than God, and Satan commanded Cain to make an offering unto the Lord. Cain, choosing to follow the counsel of Satan, offered the fruit of the field, which was not in similitude of the atoning sacrifice. Despite warnings, Cain persisted in following Satan, and his choices showed that he loved Satan more than God. Cain has provided us an example so dramatic we cannot miss the results of failing to follow the counsel of the Lord. The Lord is... Void, bood, b o u d. When we do what he asks, his blessings are ours as we choose to follow him and make an appropriate offering in righteousness with our hearts, with our minds, and in good works. Um, what was I reading? Was it the scriptures? It was my Book of Mormon last night. One second. So, in part of my goals, I'm reading the Book of Mormon three times this year. And right here, I, I love how it all just comes together. And it's all just like one, one circling eternal round that everything connects. It's anyway. So, I was reading First Nephi chapter nineteen last night, um, and in verse twenty-three, what happens in nineteen is um, Nephi is teaching his brothers. Uh, Nephi makes the plates, and uh, da -da. He talks to his brothers about the scriptures, and in verse 23, I did read many things unto them which were written in the books of Moses, but that I might more fully persuade them to believe in the Lord their Redeemer, I did read unto them that which was written by the prophet Isaiah, 
For I did liken all scriptures unto us, that it might be for our profit and learning. And there's a note next to, for I did liken all scriptures unto us. We learn in the beginning of the Book of Mormon that the test of mankind is always before us. We will choose, will we choose to obey the will of the Lord and receive the blessings of heaven or lose them through disobedience? The key is to learn vicariously from the scriptures. That's the thought. Um, Cain here offers us a vicarious lesson in listening to the spirit when our pride is pricked. Do we listen and, you know, obtain a remission of our sins and inherit blessings? Or do we reject it and become the father of Satan's lies? It says here, uh, for from this time thou shalt be the father of his lies and thou shalt be called perdition. So it's not just a follower of Satan here anymore. It's we become him. We become not just a puppet in his hands. We become, you know, it says Satan is perdition, the father of all lies. When we enlist in his, in his schemes, in his, in his, whatever we become the Satan. I'm coming, honey. All right. So that's all I have for Moses chapter five, verses one through 29. I love you all. I will see you later.